and kick off. Um, so we have here uh, Rachel Gage and Melissa McComer, who are going to talk to us about Let's Take a Spin using carousels in your library. Um, we'd like to thank our platform sponsor, Evergreen Community Development Initiative, and our captioning sponsor, Mobius. And speaking of captions, I have just put the link in the chat where you can follow along with live captioning. And just as a reminder, this session is being recorded and all sessions and uh, recordings and transcripts will be posted to the Evergreen Community YouTube page in a couple weeks. So without further ado, I hand it over to Rachel and Melissa. Hey, everyone. Thank, thank you. Um, so we were excited that we were at the end of the conference so that you guys can just relax and have a fun session to listen to. Um, we're not going to get super technical. Um, we're mainly just going to sort of show you what we have done with carousels at our library. And, um, and hopefully that will inspire you. Um, that's our main goal because we've just had a lot of fun with them. So we wanted and to share some of that fun. Yep. Go ahead, Rachel. Yeah. So um, carousels. They're awesome, and we really enjoy them. Um, uh, my name is Rachel Gage. Um, I've been here at the library for about 15 years. Uh, that's Burlington Public Library. Um, I started out as a page in our old little tiny library and then moved on to the circulation desk for 10 years, uh, front lines. And then just in the last uh, several years, um, I've become the cataloger. Um, Melissa got a different position within the library, so I took over cataloging from her, um, which has been really great. I've enjoyed it a lot. And so cataloging and interlibrary loans are my, my two main tasks. So I'm the technical services associate. And like Rachel said, um, I was cataloger before, and then I tossed that to her and do more of the acquisition stuff. Um, we are going to share some fun things about us too. Um, I drive a Mini Cooper and I was born and raised in concrete. So um, just did my first Mini Cooper rally last weekend. So it's on my mind. And Rachel. I have these two amazing, adorable cats, um, <laughs> Diesel and Ransom. Diesel's the big one with the stripes and Ransom is the uh, black and white cat. I also have a husband too, but you know, people love seeing cats, right? <laughs> well, and someone mentioned earlier that we didn't have enough cats in the oh, conference. There we go. So there's a couple of cats. Um, so we are from Burlington Public Library and this is you, Rachel. Yep. So Burlington Public Library, um, we're a, uh, Burlington is a big agricultural town in Skagit Valley. Um, and as you can see here, Melissa has this picture of a bridge, which you're probably wondering why is there a picture of a bridge? That's random. But um, several years ago, the bridge collapsed. And this bridge, um, the two big towns of Skagit Valley, Burlington and Mount Vernon, and it collapsed. Um, a big truck hit the top of the bridge. And as you can see, it just went away. Uh, luckily, no one was hurt or or killed, which was amazing. But um, yeah, so that was some big excitement for us several years ago. <laughs> um, we've been on Evergreen since 2011. So uh, we've, we've been doing it for a while and um, have enjoyed it. And um, we work on it. We have a small consortium with a couple other very small libraries who use Evergreen with us. Yeah, and um, the other unique thing about Burlington Public Library is Skagit County is one of the only counties in the whole state of Washington that does not have a county library system, which has proved to be um, hard for a lot of us. Um, so that means each city supports its own library with taxes. So if you happen to live out in the county, um, you actually have to pay a fee to get a library card, which is, it's hard on a, a very, a lot of levels. But, um, so Burlington is one of the libraries in Skagit County. We are one of three that use Evergreen. 
Um, there's two other much smaller libraries than us that uh, use Evergreen with us. And uh, to see how big we are, I was just going to go through some of yours. So like um, Taryn, we are smaller than your library <laughs> by a lot. Um, Joanne, we are um, we're smaller than yours in population. Our collection is closer um, if, if you, we include all of our digital materials. <laughs> Um, and uh, so we, because we just have one branch, with, um, about eight registered users. Um, so we're we're very much on the smaller end of things, um, and that's where we are there. So what we wanted to talk about was carousels. So we started using carousels um, after it was a lightning talk at a conference, actually that we heard about it, I think it was in 2017, and we started implementing carousels um, in their first form, um, which was basically two carousels. We had a new items and a recently returned. I think there was a couple other options, but those are the two that we had. Um, anything else you want to add on that slide, Rachel? Um, not really. Okay. So, but we ran into a couple glitches with that that we didn't really like. Um, one of them was the what's considered new. So we kept running into this thing where we had this new carousel. We um, cataloged an item, so we got a new, um, we replaced our uh, edition of Shakespeare in this example. It would pop up as a new item because it was new in our catalog. So our new items didn't always reflect what was actually new. Yeah, the other thing that came up that kind of plays hand in hand with this is that if, for example, this Shakespeare book, um, if I happened to see it in the catalog and saw that it had just a really bad record attached to it that did not give good information or the pit, there was no picture or whatever, I would attach a new record to it and then it was considered new. And that's just catalog cleanup. So it wasn't a big problem, but it was something we ran into. So we were really excited when we hit version 3.4 to a catalog. Scroll by. A lot of different carousels. Um, so there's the new books. Um, am I there? Hello? Hello? Rachel, I can hear you. Okay. Yes. Um, okay. 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 Yeah. <laughs> I can. We've had a little bit of audio trouble. If you find you're having audio trouble, um, yeah, okay. you can refresh and then you'll have, like, I, I can let you back in. Okay. So can everybody hear me right now? I'm refreshing. Yes. And I'll have to let, I'll let her back in in a sec when she comes back. Okay. okay. Well, so this was just a screen. Can you, you guys can hear me? Maybe. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'll keep talking. Um, this is just some of the carousels that we started doing. So now we're able to, um, any topic that we come up with, we can create a carousel for. So Rachel, Rachel does all of these and she's able to just each month, um, she creates special carousels for the month. Um, she creates carousels for events, for seasons, um, and she has a huge amount of flexibility in what goes into the carousels and how they appear in the catalog. Sounds like you did what I needed to do. <laughs> you can talk about your carousel though. Oh, the Rachel okay. carousel. Yeah, so I had this one um, Melissa, can you find it on the, like, can you scroll up to it? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, I think it was called, it's called Rachel's newly arrived recommendations is the carousel. And what's really fun about this one is as since I'm the cataloger and the only cataloger in the library, um, everything new that comes to our building passes through my hands first. 
So it gives me the unique opportunity to um, choose things that I think look cool and put them in my carousel. And um, I've heard some feedback about it and people seem to like um, the things I put on there. They're not things I've read necessarily or watched, um, if it's a DVD, um, but just something that kind of caught my eye. So, so um, as we decided to do this talk, we um, wanted to just like sort of measure and find out how people were liking carousels. Um, we implemented these um, just before COVID and then we've been doing them throughout COVID. So, um, so actions are harder. We tried to do some measurements on how we got, um, how people were feeling about them. Um, so this is some of the stats we um, pulled. Um, and this is hard to do because items check out anyway. So um, it's hard to say whether they checked out because they were checking out anyway, or if they were um, because of our carousel. And we also, during the same time frame that we were pulling the stats, we implemented auto renewals. Um, so that helped our um, stats go up quite a bit as well. Did you have something to add, Rachel? Um, just that I can't, did you advance the slide? Cause I didn't, I don't see what you're talking about. So let's see. Yeah, I'm on the one with response by the numbers. So, yeah. um, so, uh, so one of the examples was the Irish folk tales for children. Okay. And what really stood out to us with that one is because it was an older publication, um, but we put it in the carousel and it got three circs during the month, which is really good for an item at our library, um, and especially for an older book. So it was a nice um, example of one that probably wasn't circing on its own. Right. Yeah, I feel like that um, happened often um, with a lot of the things that I put in those that carousel we were studying and getting uh, results from. Is because I used a lot of titles that maybe we were five or six years old or just haven't served the best in the past, and they they definitely went out, you know. So. Yep. Um, and then we just went to our staff. Um, our staff brought up a lot of um, things that they like about it um, and the topical list, the celebrations, the being able to um, specialize them, um, mixing formats in our carousels. So because we're not limited on our carousels by just books. So we can put in a book, a DVD, a large print, a children's, an adult. Um, however, we want to do those carousels. Um, we have lots of flexibility with that. Yeah, and then we that's a really nice thing to have, um, you know, in the old, the original version of Evergreen, where carousels were just kind of stocked into your catalog. Um, you're just very limited, so it's nice to be able to give so much flexibility. Yep. Um, we also reached out for a response from patrons. We put it up on our Facebook um page and just highlighted it and had a link into the opac so that people could um, click on that to get into the opac directly and look at the carousels and then rachel created bookmarks yep yep it was just it's that kind of came later um after doing carousels actually for several months um i wish i had thought about advertising it more before we did our um stats gathering and just you know I, I wonder if that would have made a difference too but um they're just these little bookmarks that pretty much tell people about um carousels and how to get there um on the web page or on the catalog and um, as people stop by to pick up the curbside um whoever's checking out their items just throws a bookmark in their stuff so so, and then we did get response from patrons with that. Um, so people liked the book covers um, and you can see some of the other responses. Um, one, of the, one of the interesting things was we had a lot of people who talked about, um, they weren't able to find the um, carousels. So based on the response from our people, it, it, tab to the top of our um, catalog so people could just directly 
inside the catalog because we had a lot of people they they choose a but then they're having trouble getting back to see them so i think i lost rachel but um so no, that I'm was here. that was something we added direct um based on that feedback did you yeah, have anything else rachel um, no, it, I guess I just was kind of impressed that how quickly we were able to fix that little um, thing that happened with getting back to the carousels. Um, that was a patron that I was communicating with, and she was really excited about the carousels, but that was her, her thing that was hard was she was frustrated that it just took her so much time to get back to the list. So it's nice that it was an easy fix. So far, we haven't had much response to what you're talking about. I actually more like and a lot of the, you know, streaming things, they're using a similar thing. So us, when we read, we wondered what about. And having it on, I think it's a fun word, even if they didn't know. Um, thing doesn't library uh, yeah. standard too, too technical library technical <laughs> yeah and then meredith had a question about yeah meredith a question. <laughs> yeah And uh, um, there's so the, about libraries or library level, and there is definitely customization on um, different levels of uh, who can do what. So, um, like, like our in our consort in our small consort, uh, care the average library. Um, so, can customize that. And going into that technical stuff, um, we so it took us a little while to set these up um, and learn about them. And we are going to point you to the documentation because we, we use that um, as a lot of it, as well as our help from uh, Equinox. Um, we reached out to them a lot and they walked us through it. Um, so um, we, we don't have a, a ton of the technical expertise, um, but the documentation is really good and it's a great starting point um, to check with your settings and things like that. Um, and then, so, but we did run into some hiccups that we were going to just point out that we ran into. Um, and most of these are bugs already. Um, one of them was the owning library. It, it doesn't show that it's required, but it is. And uh, we created a lot of carousels and we couldn't understand why they didn't work. And it was because we just didn't have an owning library. So they were out in the ether somewhere um not uh applied to anyone because we didn't set that owning library yeah so. that's that little that little thing um choosing the owning library it's it's not intuitive at all like it doesn't tell you anything that you're doing right or wrong with that little area so. yeah yeah uh, the other bug was um yeah, so with 3.6, um, the newest upgrade, I found out that while cataloging, which is how I always add um, items to the carousels, is when I have an item and I think it should belong in a carousel, there, was, there used to be just a little tab that I could click down and choose carousel and choose which one go, it goes into. Well, that's not there anymore in 3.6. So, um, that's definitely a big bug. Um, it's known in the evergreen world, but please put some fire on that because um, right now when I'm cataloging, I pretty much have to use the old version if I want to keep the um, if I want to keep the carousels up to date and fresh and new. So that's kind of a little frustrating. I want to get more used to the new uh, 3.6, but I also want to make my carousels look nice. So. And I think we have the bug number later on. It's further down in our in our slideshow. 
Um, so we'll definitely share that with you guys. Um, the other thing we were going to talk about was the um, carousel types can get a little bit confusing because they have names on here, but those are basically the type of carousel based on the settings. They're not um, they're not necessarily what they're called. It's just referring to the different types of um, options that you have on them. So, um, and for us, we honestly, we use the manual the most. Um, we have a recently returned one that auto does, um, but we don't use the auto ones as much because we do like the, um, the manual so that we can set it up by um, shelving location or by um, us just choosing what's, what goes into it. For us, that's been working better. Yeah, that works a lot better for us. So, um, I guess we this is, like to have more control. <laughs> yes. Um, this is the one about deleting items, Rachel. Oh, deleting from items the from the bucket. Yeah. So, um, luckily, Evergreen has some safeguards in place so you don't like delete things that you don't necessarily want deleted. Um, so, when you go into um, to, to delete your bucket like the items that are in your certain bucket um i'm sorry i can't see the slide so um i'm just trying to do this from memory <laughs> but um you just when you get to the bucket um it'll give you a list of everything that's in that particular carousel and you can click however many you want to get rid of and then I right click on those items and it gives you some options. One of them is to remove items from bucket, which is what you want. The other one is to delete items from catalog, which you probably don't want. So um, just be very careful that you're choosing remove and not delete. Um, it will, like I said, there's a safeguard. So it, Evergreen will ask you, are you sure you want to delete these from the catalog? So. Um, but just be aware of those two differences. So. Yes. Um, so here's a few of the carousel related bugs that we pulled out that we were, um, that are important to us. Um, so the not being able to add the items directly to the carousel from the record, that was possible in 3.4 and then with 3.6 it went away. So that's definitely one of the ones we really liked was being in a record and a drop down would appear and you could just add it to the carousel from there. And um, then also somebody I think already mentioned this in the chat, the ability to rearrange the order of the items in the carousels, that would yes. be really nice because we create these carousels and we put a new item in it and it shows up at the end. Um, yeah, so, so it looks um, like you've not added anything new to the carousel. Um, that's actually a really big one for me. Um, it's a little frustrating because it makes it look like we don't have anything new that we're adding and it's all there at the end. So unless the patron just decides to scroll through, um, they're not gonna see that anything new has shown up. Um, especially if they're a regular carousel user, if they bring up the home page and see all our carousels and just do a quick glance, they're just going to see, oh, nothing has changed. Yeah, it's the same. So. Yep. Um, there's a couple other ones in there that um, we just picked out. Um, the loading issues on larger systems, I think that's uh, um, has caused some people not to use them. Um, and then that last one about the bucket should be a hyperlink on the carousel grid. That would be really nice too. So you could go directly to the, um, the bucket that's created uh, with the carousel. Um, so those are a few of them. Um, we also, so we wanted to highlight some other um, libraries and their carousels that they're using. Um, we had Pines Library um, one thing I really like about theirs is the little drop down menu next to the carousel. Um, so you can choose which library you want to see the items. So um, the newly purchased items. So I think that would definitely be nice in a bigger library. Um, and yeah, so there's the drop down. Um, this library also has a bunch of the public library. So they did a lot of new um, 
new carousels, but they broke it out by different um, specialties. So the new for teens, new for audiobooks, things like that. So um, we liked that one. Am I missing anything, Rachel? I don't think so. I was just okay. looking through and it's, that's looking right. So um, there was one that talked about, oh, maybe it was Al. Did you talk about that yet? The Al. No, so we're on Adams. Oh, okay. um, Adams County Library, I really liked this one because um, they have a way to uh, skip a whole section at a time. Mm -hmm. So currently in our carousels, you have to go one item at a time. Um, you just click and it just takes you one new book, one new book or one new item. And these guys do a whole set so you can go to like the next page. Um, and then, yeah, so some of our wish list items for the future is um, uh, this, uh, the one at OWL, we really like this one because they have their New York Times bestseller list, but then they have a drop down menu um, so that it shows like hardcover fiction or nonfiction or things like that um, under their, under that little um, drop down. Uh, so we really, that's the one you were talking about, Rachel. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, um, and the, like how Jeremy was, talking about it right here, um, jumping them a page at a time would be really nice instead of just clicking one at a time. So um, just having page numbers or something like that. So, and Owls isn't technically a carousel. Thank you, Catherine. Um, it's a widget, but um, we would like our carousels to do what the widget does, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's that one. Um, Another one. Oh, this is oh, this is the scroll four at a time. So they have little page. Yeah. This is the Traverse Area District Library, and they have a little um, at the bottom. So you can click on page one, page two, page three, and it just takes you to a new set. So that's yeah. a really nice one too. Um, yeah, it really is. That would be. That's one of the biggest complaints I've heard about carousels. Is oh, I have to scroll through every single one of them. You know, and I've seen all these, you know, so. All right, so um, we sort of went through this a little bit faster, but um, uh, so the why we like carousels, whoops, and now I lost my ability to switch it. Um, the number one reason we like them is just that they're fun and uh, are so flexible and we can do so many different things with them. Um, so uh, Rachel really enjoys these. She always lets us know when she's coming out with new ones. And um, it's it's fun to see the different variety that we can put on that home screen. Yeah, I do feel like carousels, um, when Melissa first told me about them um, a few months ago, I just, I immediately was drawn to them and the creativity that it gave me a chance to explore. And, um, you know, as the cataloger, I, I love being the cataloger and stuff, but I don't get to do a whole lot of like other things like this. And so this is kind of my baby a little bit. I love that I get to, you know, choose different um, categories and um, feature different kinds of books or different kinds of DVDs and if it's a special month, you know, highlight certain things that's particular to that month. Um, it's, it is a lot of fun. I hope patrons think it's as fun as I think it is. So. <laughs> well, and we've heard from some of them and they, they've seemed to like it. So, um, and now that we have it all set up, it really isn't a huge, um, a time, um, a time thing. They're easy to do once we have the system in place, right, Rachel? Yeah, and I don't know, I, it might have been when I had to refresh, but um, the nice thing about these two is I can go in and deactivate them um, so they don't show up on our web page, but I don't have to delete the whole thing. I can just click deactivate, and if I want to bring it back in like a month later, I can activate it again and it's, it's literally a click of a button, so. Yeah, especially like with your um, 
your Rachel's recommends. Um, yeah. That's one like, so if we have a month where we already have a ton of carousels, you can turn it off for a little while, mm -hmm. but then you can just pop it back on when um, we need more carousels again. Right. Yep. All right. So since you can't see the screen, Rachel, we're on the questions one. Okay. <laughs> because because we talked really fast and went through this <laughs> quickly. I know. And because and because we know a lot of you are on the East Coast and it's later in the day, so we're just helping you guys have um, an earlier evening. Yeah. But, that's, um, that's what it is. We're just the cool group that wants to let you out early. So. Yeah. <laughs> um, so if you do have some questions. We uh, will are willing to send you to other people for answers, but you can start here and see <laughs> if we um, have any answers. Um, and I'm trying to read through the chat, um, yeah. but yeah, like the the special events, the beach reads, Black History Month. Um, yeah, those are those are great. I mean, it's really the sky's the limit. It really um, is. So, like doing the seasonal holiday features like honestly i can't wait till october so i can do halloween um i think melissa might have told me about this after that and um so i didn't i haven't had a chance to do that yet um but this it's it really is sky the limit you can pretty much do whatever you want to do so so there's so Anne um Anne asked how do you learn to do these so our first thing would be to go to the documentation and follow through the documentation. Um, you do have to have 3.4 or later. Um, I think it was 3.4 when this started. Someone can correct me if I'm wrong. And then, um, and we're running 3.6 right now. Um, and that's when we ran into the glitch about adding to the buckets, but, um, or adding to the carousels from the records. But otherwise we haven't, um, it's been going well. So that's what um, version we're using. No, go ahead. Um, I just want to see, just say that I saw Jane's um, question about how often do we run into um, items without covers. So you you really don't want to put items without covers in your carousel because obviously if they don't have covers, there's nothing fun to look at. So um, I personally, I feel like when I'm doing my carousels, I don't run into it super often. Um, and I also look at it as an opportunity to update that record if I do find them. So um, it gives me an opportunity to do some catalog cleanup. So, and because I think there was a question yesterday, somebody was talking about adding magazines to these, and you could do that. But one of the problems mm -hmm. we would have with magazines in ours is our magazines don't have cover images, so right. we probably wouldn't do that. Um, but um, yeah, so but that would be something to consider as you're putting things into the carousels. And that's actually something we ran into a lot when we were doing more of the automated ones, because yeah. the automated one was pulling in just new items. And sometimes if those didn't have cover records or um, if we hadn't fully cataloged them, we'd get the no image available. And I think that's an option how you have those show too. You can have them either just show with the title or I think it was an option, if I remember right, that Equinox helped us with to actually have no image available or um, right. whatever it says. So I think there's a little bit of, you can choose how you handle those too. Um, I was looking at Lene's comment about um, getting maybe a little too carried away with having too many carousels. Um, and I think, I think that's what she was, yeah, that's yep. what she was saying. Um, I totally get that. Like I can get so carried away with, oh, this sounds so cool. Let's do a carousel. Let's do a carousel, you know? And um, for me, at least, that's one of the things I like about being able to deactivate them is, okay, this carousel is super cool, but maybe I'll save it for later. But I did all this work putting all these books in here. So I'll just deactivate it and bring it back later. Um, I... I don't know this for sure, but I would think as a patron, um, having so many options would be actually really nice. Um, I think it's too overwhelming or too much work, but uh, I guess just finding a middle ground, so. 
Yep. Good answer, Rachel. <laughs> All right. Oh, and then there's our contact information and where we're from. And you're welcome yeah, to go to our me. library. Yeah, go ahead, Rachel. Reach out to me anytime you have questions about carousels. Um, I love talking about them personally. And um, <laughs> people at work probably get tired of me talking about them, but that's fine. Um, I'm still learning myself, but I do feel like I have a good beginner's grasp of how to get started and um, what has worked best for me. So. Yes. So I think that's all we've got. Yeah, I think that's the <laughs> end. So <laughs> thank you both so much. Um, this was really great. And I, I loved hearing your enthusiasm for carousels. Well, I just saw a question from Tammy. So let me answer that real quick. Sure. How much time do you spend updating the carousels? Um, I feel like for me, it's it's really just one little extra step I have to do when I'm cataloging something new is just add it to the carousel. So in that regard, it's not any extra work really at all. Um, if I wanted to add a brand new carousel, um, I would say it probably takes me about an hour or an hour and a half. It just really depends how much how many you want to put in your carousel too. Um, so it's, it, I guess it kind of depends on how much work you want to put into it too. So, well, and we are a smaller library, so Rachel mm -hmm. is our only cataloger. Um, and she, so she gets to handle all of the books that we have come in. So she's in a good position to like create these and stuff. So the, um, the automated ones might work better at a right. larger system. Um, yes. But it's definitely, definitely, if you're a smaller library, this is this is a fun, fun way to highlight books. So right. Cool. Well, thank you. <laughs> yep, thank you both so much. Um, there is the developers update and closing session that'll be happening at five thirty, um, and I'll be posting a link for that you know, on the main event chat here in just a little bit. But um, thank you guys. What a great way to wrap up our regular sessions. And uh, hopefully we'll be seeing the rest of you at, um, at the 530. So thanks a lot, guys.